I do not know how it's gonna end up, right? So there was just a little problem towards the end with, with, with the memory part, but for the most part, you went through it without having any, any memory problem, right? You think that the, uh, when you play at home, that doesn't happen? At home, you just, you don't have a problem with the memory? It, it, all, it all depends, um, but I'm more comfortable. I was struggling the whole time. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, my Physic yeah, physically struggling the whole time. So. Yeah. And, and so when I'm thinking about that, I think, um, yeah, the, the mind then, then, then I kind of lose my place. And mm -hmm. uh, struggling, why? Because you are playing here or because you were not warmed up? Why? why? What you, what's the reason you think you, you felt you were yeah. struggling? Probably because that's the level of musician I am. Yeah. Um, and I, maybe I'm not warmed up as much mm -hmm. um, and I'm nervous. Yeah. Um, this Part is like my traveling guitar. I'm not used to playing. I'll, I'll give you every excuse there is. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> well, we all have excuses, of course, yeah. But one thing to, to know, it's also that, you know, the ideal situation is that on the stage we play as good as we have our best experience at home, right? Sometimes at home you, you, you play and you're like, oh, this, this is it. I got it. This is the way, yeah. So that's your peak, right? So, how do we manage to maintain that even when we are playing somewhere else? And that's a, you know that's a tricky, tricky situation. And it's it basically happens, I would say, with the experience. The more you get to play in front of people, the more you get, uh, the more you are able to to handle it. That's basically it. Of course, there's more to it. But now um, about warming up. What I'm feeling is you have a pretty good dexterity, you know, especially in the right hand, because that's the one that keeps having this uh, sort of like a fast turning notes where, where the left hand, it's more stationary change, changing the chords. I would like to improve on some uh, uh, technical aspects uh, in terms of precision, in terms of tone production, in terms of precision of you know, plucking the strings, also some of the changes with the, with the left hand, and then on the musical side, to, to take more time and to take, uh, to sort of, like, even map out what is it you want to do musically. So that it's not just simply a study with, with, with you know, that sort of motoric sense, but it, if you approach it more, that it would have... Sort of like like the, like the attitude or, or the flow of the piece that you would have that in, in, in inside of you as you play, and in turn what happens is that when you when you connect to that musical eye to that musical expressivity, all these other things start to sort of fade away. It's a different guitar, I'm not warmed up, etc., etc. Et you know, so the more we are connected, the music the better. So let's go back to the technique. One thing I want to know what I what I noticed is as you, you were playing, you kept putting your left foot a little bit higher on 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 like on the other one. So is this a little too low for you? It's too high. Are the chair is I, too I, high. Yeah, I sit, uh, I'm okay. I sit, I'm used to sitting lower. Um, okay. I, I don't know. You know what else would have helped if I tuned my guitar? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I don't know. something that you can put on the nails that can prevent them from wearing down. So, so what happens is that, you know, by having, let's go back to the strip, by having two short nails, you, you know, you get to that point where you want to pluck and you, and you start with your fingertip and then there's that click. And I feel that almost in every note that, 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 that yeah. happens. So ideally what you, what you want to get is that the string gets on the fingertip and the nail at the same time. Okay. So there is no this 
by your sense of hearing to warm up a little bit that, that tone, that, that melodic note that you're doing with the eighth finger with the resto. Maybe change the position a little bit, give it a little bit more of a turn that you get a little more of a fingertip. So 
you're listening carefully what is it what is happening and also imagining what is it you want you want now what I'm asking you so do, do it again good now give me the top notes only with your eighth finger of sound is too much perpendicular and the way you hit the note is like this. I want you to sort of push it rather than punch it. Much better. Put a thumb on the string. Engage it with the thumb. Give it a little bit softer, a little bit. Beautiful. You feel it? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, you know, the, the movement, it's a little it's slower over the string. If it is very fast, it's very articulated, but it's very dry. So it's very pop percussive. And I want you instead of thinking percussively, think like a like a wind, sorry, like a string instrument. It's like it has a little bit of movement to it that it's slower. Once again, only that. Wonderful. Now let's put those two things together, which means very soft accompaniment and the melody, melody at this point significantly above it because now we are exercising the dynamic difference So a little bit more of turning it here. And also what is happening, I'm feeling a little bit of this finger hitting another string, like the back of this finger, like this time. So that you are a little bit more precise. So observe your right hand. There were a couple of times you st I still, still heard that back one of the strings hitting. Do it again, much better. Perfect, that's what I have. Wonderful. Now, um, like th this sort of uh, approach, and we did just one measure, I want you to, of course, do it throughout the whole piece. Now it's gonna take us a long time if we're gonna go measure by measure for it. But now let's just work we started with just single notes, trying to establish a good, good tone. Then we went to in, in just a accompanying part, then the melodic part, put those two things together and did two measures. Now let's expand that for a time being just on one phrase. One phrase that in itself, if you are a storyteller, and if you are telling an interesting story, like it could be your, this is in the minor, it's sore, it's sort of, you know, it's a romantic period, so it can be a background music to, let's say, a movie, some story. And it, it starts, and go like, once upon a time, you were this and such and such and whatever, right? Your, your voice changes, your attitude changes to it, right? So whatever is happening in here, instead of using your mouth to express it, it has to be expressed in here, right? So that the whole phrase, as we are talking about just the first phrase, also has this, um, um, how, how would you say, um, like a life. If you are once upon a time, there was this, and what happened was that, and such, and then. So there's a, this happening in the phrase, right? So let's try to do that. Let's do it in the same way. Yeah, maybe not so not so fast for the time being, just so we can control a little bit more, and we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll try to play along and just to help you and guide you a little bit with the dynamic. Got it? So the same tempo, so it's... Here you have it. Sus 
stranded? Maybe by yourself? Towards the sea, the That's it. That's very good. Yeah. So now the mind starts being busy with music. It becomes more interesting, also for for you as, as, as a player. Right? So, um, one thing that I want, want, want to say as an option, technical option to, to this piece, is that what, what I find difficult that if I play this piece with a rest stroke on, 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 on A and keeping I and M on these strings, is that you're constantly changing sort of like the, the, the length of this finger, which changes its angle and then the quality of the tone as well. That's why I prefer in arpeggiated. Uh, uh, studies or something like that, to keep using the, the melodic fingers with a free stroke as well. <laughs> Entering this rest stroke into, into a pageant sort of like complicates the mechanical ease of, of the hand. So if you can practice it, but it's with a free stroke, but still getting the dynamic difference, I think you will gain more control over it, you know, and I think it will also avoid this back buzz, of, you know, the string being hit by, by the low, lower string. That's one thing. And another thing, if you notice what I'm doing with the right right hand finger, look at the look at my finger. They're not moving far apart. No, no, no. I'm not using these three all the time for, for look. You you're, you you have, you are doing this. What I'm doing is I lower the thumb. Oh come. I'll explain why. The reason why I do that is because the thumb has a opposing motion to these three. Right? So when it, when the thumb is brought into a, a arpeggiated pattern. Because it has this opposing, opposing motion, the, the, the whole pattern becomes easier. Much, much easier. The other advantage of it is I can move around the strings and I can use this finger when I need it on the second string for the melody, this one on the first. So, so I settle my fingers here rather than extending the A and looking for that part. You understand? So if I try to play as fast as I can, Slower than, than, than this, or because of that opposing motion. The only thing is that we have to adjust the thumb going mm -hmm. up and down, and it's different. but it's an idea. Yeah, I noticed that Segovia, I believe, did the fingering, and he. There's times when he does that. If, you, if mm -hmm. you're familiar with yes, his finger, yes. times he does and times he doesn't. And so yeah. I just thought maybe Why he had a reason. The reason could be just he felt that the way and it worked for him. Fantastic. I don't think that there is one fingering that works for yeah. all of us. Yeah. I, what I like is to give many options to you know the students and then they decide. I try this. I try this. I try this. This thing works for me, right? So the the, the reasoning be, be, be behind this finger that I'm showing you is. It, it has mm -hmm. that mechanical sense, mm -hmm. right? And thus, by making it easier mechanically, will help musically as well. So sometimes, yes, I remember this version that it, it, it has that kind of uh, thumb that it would jump onto the onto the fourth string or something mm -hmm. like that, like here. Mm -hmm. You see, and that's exactly that. You have the thumb on the fourth, I on the third, and the A finger on the first. Much easier to reach than this. This is uncomfortable when there's a string in between. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's 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 the reason. So that kind of pattern you can apply throughout the, the study, and I think it will make it uh, better as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, as I said, musically, it 
has to breathe. It has to have that very romantic, oh yes, and wow, that kind of thing. All right? Yes. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.